So I asked if plot x is a function of time if the mass is released from rest when held at 0.3 meters to the right of the equilibrium position. So the only thing that I've changed from the previous example to this one is that our um, damper has a new value of 10 newton seconds per meter compared to 60 in the last one. All right. So I'm not going to go through the process of solving for the free body diagram and um, our equation again. Um, if you want to see that, it's in the previous example. Okay. So moving down here, this is what we did, blah, 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 blah. So we end up with this equation for how our block is going to move um, in terms of a differential equation. We then need to go through and find what omega n and our damping ratio are. And the damping ratio is, sorry, the uh, natural frequency is not going to change because we haven't changed the springs or the mass. However, the damping ratio will change because we've changed the value of the damper. Okay, so we're going to pick up this question here, solving for the new damping ratio, um, which comes out to be, so I said um, C is 10 this time. Okay, and we end up with a damping ratio of 0 0.167. So this now corresponds to an underdamped scenario. Okay, so this time we're going to be solving a different equation for x as a function of time um, based on that. And if you look through your notes, the general form for this type of situation is x equals c e to the negative zeta omega n t multiplied by sine omega d t plus one. All right. So our two um, unknowns or constants that we need to solve for are c and psi, but we need to also determine what omega d is, and we can get this from what we already know. So omega d is equal to omega n square root 1 take zeta squared. So substituting in, we know omega n and zeta. So it becomes 10 1 take 0 0.67 squared. And we end up with a value of 9.86 radians per second. So now it's just a case of actually solving for C and Psi. And we have our initial um, conditions, which are exactly the same as what we had before. We know it's released from rest, so at time equals zero, our velocity x dot has to equal zero. And we know it's released um, 0.3 meters to the right. So again, at x equal, oh, sorry, t equals zero, x has to equal 0.3 meters. So let's start with the one for x again, um, because that one's a little bit easier. So we're going to substitute x equals 0.3 and t equals 0 into this equation up here. So it's going to be now I'm just going to leave these because they're going to drop out anyway. Okay. So we end up with 0 0.3 is equal to c Something to the power of 0 is always going to be 1, so that goes away. And we end up with just sine of, again, that goes to 0, so psi. So we've ended up with our two unknowns in this equation, so it's going to become um, simultaneous uh, equations. So if I rearrange, I can treat this as my first simultaneous equation. So for my second equation, I need it from my second initial condition, which is in terms of x dot. So what that's going to mean is I need to take the derivative of this equation up here um, in order to have it in terms of x dot. So again, we're going to need to apply the product rule. I'm going to treat this first part here, the c and the exponent, as my u using the product rule. And this sign part here is the v using the product rule. So when I take the derivative, x goes to x dot, I keep the first part the same, and I multiply by the derivative of the second part. So sine goes to cos, I write out the bracket, 
and then I need to multiply by the derivative of what's inside, which is just going to be omega d. So now I do the same thing except the other way around. So this part stays the same. And I multiply by the derivative of this first part. Which looks like that. So I can make this look a little bit nicer by putting it all together. And I'm going to factorize some things. So I've ended up with this CE exponent part in both of the terms. So I'm going to bring it out the front. And I'm going to have inside a bracket like that. Alright, so now I can fill it in um, because I know it time equals zero, x dot is equal to zero. So I'm going to end up with zero equals c these parts are going to drop out again, so I'll just leave them like that. Omega d, I can substitute in. It's 9.86. Okay, minus, I can substitute these in as well. Um, we know them as 0.167 and 10. Okay, so c stays out the front, anything to the power of 0 is 1, so that goes away. I end up with 9.86 multiplied by cos of this, minus, this is going to become 1.67 times sine of this as well. Okay, so that becomes my second simultaneous equation. So now it's just, yeah, simultaneous equations, substitute in and solve. So I'm going to substitute equation 1 into equation 2. Okay, now I can multiply out my bracket and I'm going to find that I get sine over cos here or cos over sine, whatever, um, and then sine and sine over each other on the second term. So they're going to cancel um, here and here and remember that sine over cos is equal to 10 so I can simplify that down as well. So this becomes... So these cancel out with each other. Um, if I want, I can do 0 divided by 0.3, so that's going to cancel out as well. And all that I'm going to be left with is if I move this to the other side, I get 1.67 is equal to 9.86, and remember sine over cos is 10. So solving for it. Um, we end up with it coming out to approximately 1.40. So now we just need to go back and find what c is equal to. And of course we had an equation where c is equal to 0.3 on sine phi. And this is approximately 0.304. So we can substitute it back into our equation for x, um, and it comes out to be x equals c, which is 0 0.304, e to the negative 1.67 by 10t, sine omega d, which was, oop, 
9.86 t plus 5 which was 1.4 so then we can plot it in MATLAB to see what it looks like if we plot x against t and this is what we get so you can see again it's starting at 0.3 meters which is correct and we have the under damped case which is the one that's going to oscillate back and forth gradually damping out the motion until it's you know approaching what it should be which is the equilibrium position of x equals zero all right so that's the answer to that one uh, see you in the next video